Hello everyone, this is Damon with Easy Green Screen, and for this tutorial, I've got an image that was sent to me by an Easy Green Screen user, and they shot this image against a green screen background with the softball player standing on top of a white floor, and they want to know the easiest way to remove this floor after they've removed the green screen using Easy Green Screen. So I'll first point out that Easy Green Screen creates a non-destructive set of layers along with a transparency mask. So nothing was applied directly to the image and this is actually pretty easy to accomplish inside of our mask and I'll first just show you the mask. If you alt click on Windows or option click on Mac in this mask you can see the transparency information that was created by Easy Green Screen. And so really what we need to do is make the areas black that should be erased and it will remove that white floor. And this is actually pretty easy to do, and I'll show you the technique that I use, although there are several different techniques. And the first thing I'm going to do is just turn off all of my adjustment layers, and then I'm going to right click um, in between the layer and the mask, and then click on Disable Mask. And so now I'm viewing the original image, which as I mentioned, this is a non-destructive set of layers, so we've got the original image still in place here. And the reason why we're going to touch it up in the mask is that way if we make any mistakes or need to change something later, we don't erase something that we can't get back. So the first thing I want to do is make a selection. There's two ways to do this. You can try to select all of the white, or you can try to select all of the person that you want to keep and then invert that selection. And I like this method, especially against the white, because it typically you end up with less of a fringe on the, on the border this way. So what I like to use for this is the quick selection tool, and that's underneath the uh, magic wand tool. And I use the auto enhance function, and this sample all layers if that's checked on, it will select based on the final image as if all these layers were merged. And if it's not on, it's just going to sample the layer that we're on. So if it's not checked, make sure that you are on the original foreground layer here, which we are. And I'm just going to now quickly brush over the areas we want to keep. Now I'll point out on this brush that the size of this brush determines the threshold it's using. So I like to start big with this brush and then work my way down as I um, try to recover some details. And this auto enhance edge, if you watch what happens when we brush over, after we let go of the um, brush, it seems to kind of want to snap everything into place. And it's just trying to um, refine that edge. Now I'm going to zoom in and try to get some of these other areas. Uh, first I'll um, work on this edge right here. And once I'm fairly happy with it, then I'll zoom in. And I'll also point out that this image is not really high on the resolution. And when you're doing these kind of selections, you want to do it on your on your full resolution image because it um, it helps get a better edge if you have more resolution to work with. But since this area is selected and I want to now deselect it, I'll hold the Alt down and then I'll let it snap into its place. And you see it did a pretty good job. And then I'll make this um, brush really small. And again, Alt. So I got my minus and then click right in this little area here. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm not going to worry about being perfect for this demonstration. You can spend a little more time if you need to on your image. I'll also point out that the uh, left and right bracket keys make this brush larger or smaller. That's the keyboard shortcut for that. So now I'll just try to add to this selection. And if you have the, some areas that um, it's having a hard time auto-selecting, you can always, always come in and use some of your other tools, like your normal lasso tool. If you hold the Alt down, you see we're subtracting from the selection and we can remove areas. And if we hold the shift down, we're adding to the selection. And some of these areas around the shoes that 
slightly defocused, it's going to have a hard time auto selecting on its own. But you can spend as much time as needed and come in here, and I'll demonstrate the polygon lasso tool. If we use Shift, we can just click points and add to our selection. I think that's pretty good there. So now um, what we need to do is since we've got um, the subject selected, we need to invert that. Real quick before I do that, I'm going to um, just remove a little bit down here near the shoes. All right, that looks pretty good for this demo. So now we need to invert the selection. So now we've only got um, outside of this area selected. So now I'm going to re-enable this mask. I'll turn my other layers on. And you can see too that spill correction, those greenish colored shoelaces had some spill correction applied. After we're done here, I'm going to show you how to fix this as well. So anyway, um, let's go back or zoom back out. Then I'm going to click on the foreground mask. And so if you just click on it, you can see that you have that selected. You can now paint directly in that mask, but you're still viewing the, um, the foreground image. And so I'm just going to demonstrate I'm painting black here. Now you see I can go right over the edges because we've got that protected with our selection. Now when we get up to this area, right up in here. I just want to be careful because not all of those pants are selected so I don't want to erase those so I'll make my brush a little smaller. Now I can just finish and clean that up. Now I'm going to deselect this and overall that looks pretty good but let's check it against a solid color and you can see that we do get a bit of fringing because the um, the white color is pretty bright. So what we can, or the white background was pretty bright and it blended on those edges. What we can do is if we Alt or on a Windows or Option click on Mac, I've already deselected, but if I click the Alt and then click on the, um, or excuse me, it's Control. I mean, that's what I meant to say. So Control or um, on Windows or um, Command on Mac and click on the foreground you've now made a selection based on the transparency information. So what we can do now is again we can invert that selection and then we can um, uh, expand that by one pixel so you see we push this selection in. I'm also going to feather that. And let's feather it by, you don't need a lot, maybe three tenths of a pixel is all. That's just going to soften the edges up if we try to remove any of that fringe. So now I'm going to do a control H or a command H and that hides your um, selection from view. Although we still have the selection made, it just hides it so we can actually see the edges. And now I'm going to select this mask again. I'm once again going to go in anywhere that I see we have this fringe. I can just paint and you see we're just basically contracting that selection. I don't have to worry about going over the edges because I've got that selection that we can't actually see in place. Maybe a bit too much on that. I think I'll leave that alone. That was a bit much as well. And you can also go in here and um, I'm going to deselect everything now. For these really tough areas, like I mentioned, we didn't have a lot of resolution to work with. So we've got just a few pixels where it shows through. Um, you can just grab a black paintbrush now that we've um, 
deselected that already. And now you can just go in, and we're still working on the mask. And you can actually soften your brush a bit. Just working with a one pixel brush here, I size it all the way down. And you can just go in and fine tune this as much as you want. And as I mentioned, the good thing about working with the mask instead of trying to actually delete the pixels is you can go in at any time and you can paint areas white that you want to be white or um, areas black that you want to be black and you've not lost anything in the original image. You can fix that transparency. So now as I mentioned about the shoes, you see that this had some spill correction applied on the shoes. Well again, that's in a separate non-destructive layer. So if I um, hide that layer, you see we've got our green colored laces back. The problem is, is that you lose the spill correction in the hair. So I'm going to re-enable this, but we've got a spill mask here, and this is telling, um, Easy Green Screen builds this mask, and it's um, telling this layer where to apply the spill correction. So I'm gonna make sure we're on the mask here, and I'm going to paint black right over those areas that I want to remove spill correction. And now we've got that original green color that we want back because Easy Green Screen doesn't know that it needs to fix green spill on hair but not on laces. It just sees color. So, um, But we do have everything non-destructive here so we can fix it. Now, same thing. I think this softball probably had some, and it did. We can see it had some spill correction applied. But if we paint right over this, we can remove that spill correction. And just be careful when you're doing this, you're not painting over areas of the skin that had some spill fringe because you don't want to remove that spill correction in those areas. So anyway, I probably spent more time trying to describe how to do this than it actually will take you to do it. It should probably take you just a minute or two to touch your mask up using this method. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you're interested at all in Easy Green Screen, please be sure to visit our website. That's easygreenscreen.com.